Welcome to the subject electromagnetic waves and transmission lines. In this session, we shall be dealing the topics electric potential and the relationship between the electric field and electric potential. And finally, we conclude this topic with the electric energy density. So, essentially, we have three things number one, electric potential, number two, the relationship between electric field and electric potential. Number three, the electric energy density. So, before going to this actual topic, let us have some introduction. This electric potential is not a new thing. We come across this in our high school intermate also. Electric potential. So, what is fundamentally electric potential? So, in general physics, we define electric potential as the amount of electric work done in moving a unit electric charge in the presence of electric field from one point to another point. I repeat once again, the electric potential is essentially the amount of electric work done in moving a unit electric charge in the presence of electric field from one point to another point. Let us say one point is A and another is B or C and D like that. We designate one is the starting point which is the initial point and another is the destination which is called the final point. Now, translating that into the mathematical form or equation form, I write like this. So, in the definition of electric potential, there is something called as electric work done in the definition itself. So, here W refers to the electric work done. So, how do you understand this? W equal to Q minus Q integral from initial point to final point E dot dl. So, what does it actually mean? Let us try to understand one by one. The electric work done is the amount of electric amount of electric work you are doing in the presence of electric field in moving a differential length dl let us say i am moving from a to b some small length that's called differential length so i am moving this charge q in the presence of electric field for a differential length dl from an initial point to final point that is the reason limits of integral are initial and final limits of integral why we need to integrate because what is the work that you are doing from moving from a to b you are moving in small 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 lengths why do you take q minus q the minus indicates you essentially do the work if you are moving against the electric field otherwise the other way is the electric field itself will do the work in forcing the charge away what you are doing you are trying to move the electric charge against the electric field there are two cases another thing the electric field itself will force the electric charge so, if there is a positive charge, if you have another positive charge, then this first positive charge will automatically force the second positive charge. You need not do any work. The electric field of the first charge is itself doing the work. Second scenario is if you have a negative charge, then if you want to move this negative charge towards the electric charge, positive electric charge, then what will happen? The reason is you have to move because negative opposite charges will attract and like charges will repel if you want to move a positive charge towards another positive charge you have to move against the electric force of the first charge if it is negative charge the negative charge will be attracted by the positive charge so in the first scenario if you want to move away from the positive charge automatically the first positive charge will throw the second charge away because the repulsion but if you want to move the same charge inside towards the positive charge then you have to do some work because you are moving against the repulsive force of the first charge. So, in that case we use either minus or positive. Generally the nomenclature that we follow is general. In general what we follow is in electricity we have uh, what do you uh, say current flow of electrons. There is an alternate way of defining flow of holes is also electric current. Similarly, if I say positive indicates the system is doing the work means the electric field of an electric charge is working on the charge to move it away. Another scenario, you have to do the work to move that charge. So, like that we use positive for one scenario, negative for another scenario. Now, electric potential V is equal to the amount of electric work done in moving a unit electric charge. That is the reason I have taken V equal to W by Q. But we know W is given by this expression, write this entire expression, minus Q e dot dl for w 
divided by q. So this q cancels, we have minus e dot dl. So just we define if it is positive, system is doing the work. If it is negative, you are doing work. So just we have to use the polarity to distinguish the scenario. Only it's to distinguish the scenario. There are only two possibilities. Either the charge has to be moved against the electric field of the first charge. For that, you have to do the work. Sometimes, if it is opposite charges, then automatically the first charge will attract the second charge towards it. You need not force it. The first charge itself will attract it. You need not force it. So, that is the reason we use positive negative alternative depending on the scenario. By default, we use negative. So, V equal to minus E dot dl. So, what do you understand here? The electric work is defined as the amount of work that you are doing on a unit electric charge in the presence of electric field for moving a differential length dl from an initial point to final point. Now, this is one way of writing and this is an alternate way of writing. Here you have an integral and here you have del. In the previous sessions we have seen del stands for partial differentials. Del expansion is dou by dou x into ax, dou by dou y into ay plus dou by dou z into az. So, in the expansion of del what do you find? You find partial differentials. Simply speaking, differentials. So, I can say this is the integral form, this is the differential form because you have an integral here and you have a differential here. I simply say that this form is an alternate form for this form. Why? Because electric potential is obtained by or is equal to the integral. You forget about this minus positive. Just now I have told you what is the significance of this polarity, positive and negative. Now you focus on the relationship. Because the next topic is relationship between E and V. Now, on the left side, we have V. On the right side, you have electric field. Or in the left side, you have electric field. Right side, you have electric potential. Now, focus on the relationship. Now, electric potential can be obtained by the integral of electric field. Now, if you twist this and say in another way, in a vice versa way, if electric potential is the integral of electric field, then electric field will be the differential of electric potential. So simple. Electric potential is integral of electric field. So, electric field will be differential of electric potential. So, this is an alternate way of writing. So, this is called as a relation between E and V. And this, I have taken this in the box because this relationship is also recognized and named with uh, a special term that is called as gradient because this del stands for gradient. I told you earlier del means gradient, del dot means divergence, del cross means curl, del square means Laplacian. So, what we have here? Del. It's nothing but gradient. So, the electric field can be obtained by the negative because minus is there, a negative gradient of electric potential. There is lot more to understand in this small equation. First of all, this equation tells you the relationship between E and V. E and V. This relationship is known as gradient relationship because you have a gradient operation. What else you can observe? You forget about electric field, electric potential, both are electric quantities. Now, you just understand in a mathematical way. In the right side, you have a quantity. In the left side, also you have a quantity. In the right side, you have a quantity where there is no bar. It is a scalar quantity. But in the left side, you have a quantity which is having bar, which is a vector quantity. So, I can say that the gradient of any scalar quantity must be a vector quantity in a pure mathematical sense or alternatively in an electrostatic sense we can say if you perform gradient operation I mean negative gradient operation on electric potential you can determine electric field. Well what is the uh, significance of this relationship why we need to study electric potential because we have seen electric charge electric flux electric flux density 
electric capacitance, so many things are there, electric permittivity, electric force, electric field, like that uh, prefixing with electric, there are several parameters. Now, what is the significance of electric potential? Why we discuss here? And not only discussing, we are establishing a relation with electric potential with electric field. Not just discussing electric potential, we are trying to convert this electric potential into electric field by gradient operation, negative gradient operation. It is simply to say that if you have an electric charge Q, you can have electric field because electric field E bar is Q by 4 pi epsilon R square, its direction is radial direction AR. So, the moment you have electric charge, you can determine electric field. Now, with the, with the knowledge of electric charge, you are finding electric field. You can also determine electric field with the knowledge of electric potential. So, this is a default case, this is a special case. That means electric field can also be determined with the knowledge of electric potential, not just electric charge. So, hence we have this discussion here because that is an alternate way. Now, there are some special scenarios from this discussion. That is, suppose you are moving from point A to B, you are moving a charge charge Q in the presence of electric field from point A to point B. So, this is initial point, this is final point. A will be the lower limit of integral, B will be the upper limit of integral. Now, suppose what happens if A and B are same? What does it mean? That means, if this is A, you are starting your journey, you are moving the charge and you are ending at a point, this is B. But this point is A and this point is also B. That means, you are moving a charge and arriving at a point where you have started. In that case, the limits of integral will be same. The lower limit will be A, upper limit will also be A. When the limits of integral are same, it simply means that you are ending at a point where you have started, which means the path, the path you are taking, it should be a closed path. That is it. Of course, the closed path means it need not be a perfect circle. It can also be a closed path. It can also be a closed path, something because you are ending at a point where you have started. Then for integral, we do not use the limits like this a a. We simply say closed contour integral. First you write a integral, then you put this symbol. This is called closed contour symbol. Whenever you find this symbol on this integral, it means that the limits of integral are same. In this scenario, what is the lower limit of integral? where you are starting your journey. What is the upper limit of integral? Where you are taking the charge. They happen to be same. So, use close contour integral. This is a special scenario. In that case, what will happen? In general, V is minus integral e dot dl. Just now we have seen. But if you have in this integral, if you have a close contour, then the same e dot dl will become equal to 0. 0 means it is neither positive nor negative. Neutrality. So, that electric field is termed as conservative field. Conservative means, you know, in physics you come across law of conservation of energy. What it says? Energy, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Created means plus x units of energy is created, plus x. Destroyed means minus x. x units of energy has been destroyed, minus x we say. But conservation of energy means neither created nor destroyed neither plus x nor minus x, neither plus nor minus. What is there in between? Neutrality, 0. That is why we say this electric field has conservative electric field. And you remember this equation because we are going to make use of this equation in the succeeding topics. We have some topic called as Maxwell's two equations in this first chapter only. The first chapter is about electrostatics. So, we say Maxwell's two equations for electrostatic fields. That is another topic we are going to make use of this equation, this equation in the discussion. Now, coming to the expressions, till now we have seen what is electric potential, its expression and its mathematical form and the relationship between electric field and electric potential. Remember carefully, electric potential is scalar quantity, electric field is a vector quantity. Whenever you perform gradient operation on any scalar, you will get resulting vector. It need not be potential and field, it holds good for any quantities.
if you perform gradient on scalar quantity you will get result as vector okay now our discussion is focused on electric potential similar to the electric field expression q by 4 pi epsilon r square ar because it's a vector quantity i am using the unit vector from decay direction you should also have the expression for electric potential this is the electric field expression and what is the expression for electric potential let us see that you observe carefully i wrote here ar here a means unit vector which tells you the direction of electric field this is the magnitude of the electric field and this tells you the direction of electric field direction is given by unit vector r stands for radial direction okay but i did not write anything here you observe why because there is no direction electric potential is a scalar so i'm not writing anything here okay this is one difference now observe another difference look at the expressions carefully what do you notice here almost 90 percent similarity is there there is one dissimilarity in the numerator you have q here also you have q in the denominator you have 4 pi epsilon here also 4 pi epsilon just one difference is there here you have r square here you have r first what does it mean first we'll first we'll see what does it mean then we'll see why it is so why you have r square for electric field and why we have r for electric potential that we'll see later first let us understand what does r square mean what does r mean it means that suppose r is uh, let us say uh, 2 meters r is 2 meters the distance the distance between the charge and the point p at which you are measuring electric field is 2 meters now instead of 2 meters if i take 4 meters then what will happen here if it is 2 then it is 2 square if i take 4 it will be 4 square 16 so if i increase the distance from 2 meters to 4 meters the difference is 2 meters 4 minus 2 2 meters if i increase the distance by 2 meters then electric field it is 4 square previously it was 4 2 to the 2 square is 4 here it is 4 square is 16 see the difference if you are moving from 2 meters to 4 meters distance electric field is falling because it is inversely inversely proportional e is inversely proportional to r square that means as distance increases the strength of electric field falls diminishes see the difference previously it was 4 now it is 16 so the electric field is rapidly falling with distance rapidly means with a just little incremental of distance you have lot of electric field which is diminishing this is called as a rapid decay in the strength of electric field so this is called non-linearity because the power of e is 1 nothing is there means 1 the power of r is 2 that means if r decreases by this this many units electric field dec will decrease by this much amount this is called non-linearity whereas here r power 1 v power 1 if r goes from 2 to 4 v also decreases from v also decreases in a similar manner that means the power of r is 1 the power of v is 1 earlier the power of r is 2 power of electric field is 1 that means if you draw a graph let us say this is in x axis this is in y axis then what do you observe here as r increases v decreases because inverse relation but with the same power r power 1 v power 1 that means you have a linear graph whereas with increase in r if electric fields are falls rapidly then that is called a non-linear graph the electric field strength decays rapidly here the electric potential decays gradually I'm just drawing rough diagrams to make you understand this is called linear curve this is called non-linear curve so that's why we say this is linear relationship this is non-linear relationship it need not be decreasing non-linearity means it can also be with respect to increasing also this is also non-linear but it is non-linearly increasing this is non-linearly decreasing so this is linear increase this is linear decrease if i say like this this is linear increase and this is linear decrease 
So here, the electric field and the distance are non-linearly related, whereas electric potential and distance are linearly related. Okay. Now, why do you have R square here and why do you have R here? What is the reason? The reason is very simple. How do you get V? Because you have the same expression. Q is same, Q is same, 4 pi epsilon is same, 4 pi epsilon is same. Yes, we need to focus on R square and R here. Now, why R is there here? Why not R square? Because how do you, what is the relation between E and V? Let us go back here. Electric potential is obtained by the integral of electric field. When you perform integral on that expression, which is having 1 by R square, if you perform integral, that R square will become R. Because you know, 1 by R square is nothing but R power minus 2. Then if you perform integral, what do you, what do you get? R power minus 2 plus 1 by minus 2 plus 1. What happens to this? R power minus 1. And this is minus 1. Minus R power minus 1 is 1 by R. So, you get 1 by R term here. And that minus will go accommodate into the expression. That they will neutralize each other. So, you get 1 by R here. Because of this relationship. So, these are the expressions for electric field and electric potential. Unit of electric potential is volt. Unit of electric field is volt per. Next, we move on to an associated topic which is known as energy density. To be more comprehensive, we say it as electric energy density. Now, what do you observe here? The expressions for energy density. I have written here energy density, but I have written three formulas. All are same. Just three different ways of expressing the same thing. What is that thing? Energy density. So, you can express the energy density in three forms. Why do you get this half? We are in the subject EMTL, electromagnetic waves and transmission lines. Essentially, now we are dealing with fields, electric fields and magnetic fields. Field theory, this comes under field theory. Now, if you recollect, there is another subject called as circuit theory. In EC, there is another domain, subdomain called as circuit theory. In circuit theory, we deal with signals in terms of voltage and current, whereas here, electromagnetic field theory, you deal with electric field and magnetic field. Of course, for generating the relationship, we used electric potential because Electric potential is somehow connected to electric field. That is why this potential came. But our su subject actually focuses on fields, electromagnetic fields, electric field and magnetic field. This is the theory of electromagnetic fields. So, we say EM theory or EM field theory, electromagnetic field theory or simply field theory. Now, we are in field theory. There is another theory in EC branch that is called as circuit theory, where you have electric voltage, electric current, electric power like that. Now, what is the expression for electric energy in circuit theory? Because you have already studied those subjects, electronic device and circuits, all those subjects, which comes under circuit theory. What is the expression for electric energy? First of all, what is electric energy storage device in circuit theory? It is nothing but capacitor. Capacitor holds electric energy. What is the formula for electric energy in circuit theory? Half Cv square. We come across this formula in even high school also. Half Cv square. Similarly, this half will be there in field theory also. Everywhere. In place of C and V, we get D and E. Because in circuit theory, you have voltage. In field theory, you have voltage volts per meter. This is called voltage. This is called electric field in field theory. In circuit theory, you have current, which is amperes. In field theory, you have amperes per meter, which is nothing but magnetic field. So, V 
e bar i h bar. I'm just uh, making one to one mapping. In circuit theory, you have v comma i. In field theory, you have e bar comma h bar. So now, in place of v, we get e, and you have here c. C means capacitance of the capacitor. Capacitance of the capacitor. Capacitance means the ability of the device to hold electric energy. Now, in field theory, you may not have capacitors explicitly, but the capacitance nature will be there. What is the nature of capacitance? Holding energy. Higher the capacitance, higher will be the electric energy that can be held. In field theory, there is no capacitor, but the capacitance nature is there. Due to what? Due to this epsilon. Epsilon is called the electric permittivity of the medium. In a capacitor, if you fill a, the capacitor region in between the plates of capacitor, if you fill this region with a material with higher epsilon, then you have more capacitance. That means capacitance is related to epsilon. So, half Cv square in place of V, we get electric field. In place of capacitance, we get epsilon. Half epsilon E square. This is in field theory. This is in circuit theory. Now, why do you have these another forms? Because this another form is, you know this relationship D equal to epsilon E bar. D bar equal to epsilon E bar. Constitutive relationship in electromagnetics. So, this and this are same. They are not different. Because if you take in place of D, epsilon E, half epsilon E, you have one more E here. Of course, they are vectors. So, E bar. E bar dot E bar. That is nothing but half epsilon E bar dot E bar. Dot product of two vectors is a scalar. So, I am not, I'm not keeping a bar here. On this E, I am not keeping bar. Simply write E square. That is what you have, you have here. Half epsilon E square. So, both are same. Now, how this is connected? This third expression. That is also I will show you now. D equal to epsilon E bar. Now, E is D by epsilon. I am just rearranging the terms. E equal to D by epsilon. Of course, bars are there. Now, in place of E, first you take half D bar, half D bar dot E. What is E here? E is D bar by epsilon. D bar dot D bar. What is that? Dot product of two vectors is scalar. So, I am not writing a bar on this D. So, simply write D square by epsilon. Half D square by epsilon. This is what you find here. So, these are three different ways of expressing the same thing. And the dot product of two, ve two vectors is a scalar. Energy is a scalar. Whether it is energy or energy density, it is a scalar. Why? Because the dot product of two vectors is a scalar. Why I am not writing bar here? Because e bar dot d bar is e square. d bar dot d bar is d square. The energy is measured in joules per energy density means energy per unit volume. Volume, cubic meters, cubic centimeters. If we follow meter kilogram second MK system, we take joule per cubic meter. This is energy density. Well, then how do you get energy? Of course, the topic is energy density. But just out of curiosity, how do you get energy? You know? If you integrate charge density, you get charge. If you integrate flux density, you get flux. Similarly, if you integrate energy density, you get energy. So, electric energy is obtained by the integration of energy density. You have to integrate throughout the volume. The three dimensional space, you have to integrate throughout the volume. That is why we use volume integral, dV. So, integrate energy density, then you get energy. So, half, take the integral. What is energy density? d bar dot d bar because half is constant i am taking it outside the integral inside you take d bar dot d bar so what you find here half volume integral d dot d bar dot d bar dv you can also write replace this with epsilon e square you can also replace it with d square by epsilon this half remains outside because it is a constant taking outside the integral so you can also write energy in terms of three ways just i am for idea sake i am written one way you can also write it in three ways just like this